Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to start part one of our mobile chicken coop build. So uh, come along with us. So if you're wondering what kind of Appalachian tomfoolery is going on here, uh, I'll reference back to this video. It explains why we're doing this. Uh, so for those of you that saw that video, I won't bore you with rehashing. But the first thing we got to do is pull the axle. We're going to take the rear axle off of this trailer. We're going to try to take the rear axle off this trailer. I was looking at the leaf springs and the U-bolts. Uh, They're pretty rusted up. So we're going to see if we can break it loose here and get it off the back of the trailer and then do an assessment at that point. Well, that was surprisingly easy, question mark, maybe. 
Yeah, so uh, obviously had to uh, cut the bolts there. Pretty much figured those U-bolts were not going to come off. They were definitely corroded up pretty badly. But uh, see, with a little bit of uh, reciprocating saw with a metal blade, came right through it there. Now, some of you were probably commenting, Troy, why don't you use a torch? And uh, to that, I would respond, because Troy ain't got no torch. <laughs> you dance with who brought you, you know what I'm saying? So the saw was my... Uh, was my go-to. I had just got some brand new metal blades where I've been cutting up all the gas pipe. And you can see this axle is, um, I'm sure there's a proper term for this, but it's a it's a bent axle, obviously to get the center of gravity of a horse trailer even lower. So the, the tray, the spring shackles, all that sit lower. But that's what I'm actually grappling with is how to install the trailer or the axle on this trailer. Do I build it the way, or set it the way that the uh, it was on the horse trailer? This thing is pretty heavy. So that it makes kind of a, a U shape. That would give the chicken coop an even lower center of gravity. But the concern I'd have is that I want a little bit of ground clearance underneath so the chickens can get under for shade, or if they, for some reason they, uh, an aerial predator would be uh, harassing them, they could get under it and kind of tuck away. So I'm not quite sure if this, what are we talking about here? About six inches. So six inches a drop versus six inches a rise, as it rolls down the driveway here, to install the, uh, the frame, the new frame we're going to build on top of the axle this way versus the way it came off the trailer. So that's what I'm grappling with. Again, six inches when it comes to center gravity isn't going to be that big a deal, I don't believe, especially since I'm not going to make the, the coop very tall. Uh, so I think it may be worth doing that. So another question you may be wondering is, do I plan to incorporate the leaf springs back into this axle that came off the trailer, or actually are still on the trailer, they didn't come off, the axle came off the trailer. And my answer right now is going to be no. I don't think I want to mess with putting any leaf springs on this. And the reason why, of course, is we're, we're not going down the road. Uh, we're not going to be going fast. We're going to be going at a snail's pace, you know, first gear and the side by side to move from point A to point B. And to me, I kind of like it into a, a hardtail motorcycle. Those of you guys that have ridden hardtails, um, you know, they're, they're a little tough on the tailbone on some speed bumps and stuff. And I, I may bounce these chickens into next Saturday with, uh, with hitting a big bump, but I don't plan on going fast. So if I'm going slow, crawling, I think a direct attachment of the frame to the axle will be okay. And of course, the only bounce we'll get will be from the flex of the sidewalls of the tires. Comment below if you think that's a super bad idea and give me a reason why. Don't just tell me, Troy, that idea sucks because your, eyes do, your ideas always suck. <laughs> give me some reason behind it and let me know what you think. So again, for those of you that watched the other video, the story behind this trailer is that a, a tree fell across it and bent the front axle where yeah, we can see that pretty clearly there, how that flat tire's played out. But I believe it got both axles. So this would be what I consider the good side. See this almost 90 degree angle here? Now, step over here with me for a second. And you can see we have still have the 90, but this really kind of curves up some. So I think there's a lot of stress here that bent this this way a little bit. So I believe if you look at, let's go back here, the face of that hub is pretty perpendicular to the bottom of the axle. So if you drew a line here, it looks perpendicular to the base of that axle. Now if you come over here and do the same thing, negative Ghost Rider, we've got a line going this way and then the angle's really kind of out. So I believe we, we still have a bent axle but I don't think that's a showstopper. All right, so let's lay this out so we can get some perspective here. It's all about perspective. And I'm gonna turn around so I don't give you the old butt shot. This thing's about, I had to guess I'd say about 60 pounds. So it's a decent axle. So the width of the axle between the two bends, inside dimension there, is 64 and a half inches. So that's a little over five feet. If the chicken box is a little over five feet wide, then if I decide to install the axle with the bend down, then of course the box fits nicely down into that, that U and I can, I can come straight up from there. If I decide to flip the axle over so that the bow is at the top or the, the bend is at the top, 
then I still would maybe want to keep it five feet wide. But of course, my tire sidewalls and my tires are still going to be a, an issue about rubbing against. Um, so I, I want to stay within that wheelbase. Now I could obviously do like a trailer, build the box within the wheelbase, but then come up and go out to where you, you know, instead of having fenders, the chicken coop would actually be wider and, and kind of have a, a knot shape over top of the tire. Or I could just keep the entire structure itself inside the wheelbase and of course not mess with fenders or anything like that. Again, I'm not going to be going down the road and worry about mud flying and those type of things. So there's really two concerns that work against each other here and that is of course the size of the overall chicken coop. How big is the box going to be? And obviously you think well the bigger the better. You can house more chickens. Yeah, but obviously the bigger it becomes then the tougher it is to articulate nimbly up our hillsides, up some of our roads, back through our trails, those type of things. So I want to take that in consideration. I like the idea of not being much wider than my side by side. And this axle is going to keep me just, it's going to be just the width of a tire on either side of the side by side wide. So I don't really want to make anything wider than that. But as far as the length goes, I, I have a lot of options there. But the driving parameter, of course, is going to be the number of birds I want to house. So if you look at, I believe it's one to two square feet per chicken uh, per coop as a minimum. If you look at Justin Rhodes' chick shawl, that's kind of some of the elements that we want to incorporate into this, that low, uh, low height. You know, obviously he's getting much more density in his birds uh, than uh, two square feet, even one square foot per chicken, I believe. I think he may be right at one square foot of chicken. So we've got 52 chicks plus our existing layers. I'm thinking 60 to 65 is what I want to build. So that, of course, would be a 60 to 65 square foot uh, building. So if we're going to be five feet wide and 10 feet long, that's 50. If we were five by 12, then of course that's 60. So in my mind, I'm thinking somewhere around that 12 uh, foot in length range. So I know some of you are probably thinking, Troy, stop talking, start building. Come on, man. This is a YouTube channel. Get on with it. Well, in all honesty, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to build this. And I really value your guys' input. Uh, many of you have left great comments on other projects that have really helped me out. So that's what I love about doing this channel is the, the two-way communication we have. I throw something out, you guys throw something back. And 99% and, uh, you know, of the time, it's really good advice. 1% of the time, it sucks. But I really, I really like your input on this. So here's our, our next issue, our next concern. Let's say we were building a 12 by 5 box. So the, the question is the placement of the axle on that box. When you think of a traditional trailer, some are dead centered, so the box, we put the axle right at the six foot center line of the box. So if we mount that over the center, what are the benefits of that? Well, we get uh, even weight distribution back and forth. Again, the tongue will make it a little heavier that way. But when it comes time for me to move it, I should be able to lift it up and move it pretty easily, even if the, the box itself has a lot of weight to it. The second benefit of that, of course, is um, articulation. You know, the further the axle is back, the tougher it is to, you know, you, you have a much broader turning radius. You can't back it in as tight of places. You, know, you think of these semi-drivers that have the adjustable axles on their boxes, on their trailers. And, you know, when they're in the city, they usually have them moved all the way forward. When they're out doing long haul stuff, then they got them moved all the way back. So kind of that idea. So I like the idea of the axle in the center for that. Now, the only con that I can think of is there's some places where my road goes flat and then has to hit the hill like this. So the more forward that axle is, the more rear end of the trailer that's hanging out and can get, get high sided and, and, and hang. So the last thing I want to do is go over a real steep, you know, from a transition from flat to steep and end up dragging the rear end of the trailer so much it lifts the tires off the ground and then we're high sided there. I want to avoid that. So I'm thinking centering over the box for all the, the benefits and if it drags then it drags and we'll just have to deal with that. But let me know what you guys think. So one of the last key questions is build material. What am I going to use to make the frame of this trailer? Obviously we could go with metal or we could go with wood. You know, metal of course is going to be stronger. Uh, it's going to have a lot more uh, rigidity to it. Uh, maybe even a little more flex from that standpoint. Wood is something that obviously I have plenty of experience working with. I have tons and tons of tools that allow me to work with wood. I don't have nearly as many metal tools. Um, but wood, of course, is going to be heavy. It's going to warp. It's going to rot eventually. It's, it's going to decay faster than the metal. 
So I'm torn between that. I know that if I build it out of metal, it's going to slow me down and I'm going to run into roadblocks that are going to require me to go out and buy some tools or have somebody come help me because I don't have a specific expertise or I don't have a specific tool to get it done. If I build it all out of wood, I'm thinking maybe a treated base uh, that'll be below the chicken, so they're not obviously pecking at the treated, but um, then everything else would be sawmill wood or just regular wood that I can, I can uh, put a protective finish on, do those type of things. Um, that is something that I can build fairly easily. I've got the workshop, the wood shop right here with all the woodworking tools, so that would be no problem building that. So again, comment below. Give me your ideas of pros and cons of building with either metal or wood. And, and... Perfect. Well, not a ton of progress for part one, but quite honestly, I thought it was going to be a lot harder getting that axle off of there. Uh, so that was a pleasant surprise. So uh, short uh, work section of the video, more talky talky. But um, the good news is I've got two good tires out of this. These two tires I aired up... Um, I think I've had this thing here almost three weeks, and they haven't gone flat. The, the, the front tires here um, are losing air, but these back ones seem to be pretty solid. So I've already got tires and wheels out of the way, so woohoo. So um, again, really appreciate any feedback below. I want to give a shout out to my brother for letting me have this trailer. I know he appreciates getting a busted up piece of junk out of his, uh, out of his shed, so appreciate him letting me have it. If he ever gets his YouTube channel gone, then we'll link to it, but until then... Well, we'll catch you guys on part two. Take care.